What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by the channel. Today's project is this Honda lawnmower and the problem is that the pull rope is extremely difficult to pull. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video we try and repair this mower, however it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. So the history on this mower is that it was mainly used by the kids in the family whose responsibility it was to mow the lawn, but the maintenance was taken care of by the parents. Now while the mower was being used, it suddenly died, and they found that the rope was almost impossible to pull, like the engine was locked up. Now by the time I was able to get my hands on the mower, the engine wasn't stuck anymore, but the rope was really tough to pull still. I then asked them about their maintenance routine, and the answer was they only added oil when it was low, but they never did any routine oil changes. They just fixed what went bad on the mower. The first thing I want to do is take a look around this mower for any signs of neglect and what we see isn't terrible, just normal wear and tear for a mower that's been in use for a long time with some minor care. However, this is when we see a major problem. What we're looking at is the governor's spring. It helps to regulate maximum engine speed. What's happened here is the spring has been modified to over rev the engine, which is not a good idea. I came up with the conclusion that the engine speed was adjusted to overcome whatever was dragging this engine down. Unfortunately, the best thing would have been to find what was making this engine and run slower fix it versus just compensating for it. If we take a look at the air filter, it's not in terrible shape, but it would be a good idea to eventually replace it. Now, this is not the reason why this engine would need a speed adjustment, so we'll just keep looking. Now, there was gas in the tank, but I've already drained it so I could power wash the underside of the deck. I also didn't see anything wrong with it, so I doubt this is a gas issue. Now, when checking the oil on Hondas, make sure the engine is on level ground and that you clean off the dipstick. Now, when checking the oil, the sticker on the engine shows you not to thread the dipstick in, but to instead press it against the threads. Otherwise, Otherwise, you'll get a false reading. And this is the first sign of trouble. The oil is barely on the end of the dipstick, which means if it was ran like this for a long time, there could be engine damage. Now, if I pull on the rope, it will barely move, and I don't feel comfortable pulling it any harder because I don't want to damage the recoil as it's mainly made out of plastic. Now, if the engine was flooded with gas or oil, that would explain why the rope is hard to pull. An easy way to confirm that would be to remove the spark plug and pull on the rope and see if it's easier to do so. Now, while the spark plug is out of the engine, we can also examine its condition. What we see is a plug that's covered in carbon, which tells me that the dirty air filter is restricting a lot of air to the engine, making it run rich with fuel. With the spark plug gone, it should be easier to pull the rope, which it is, however only slightly. That means that the reason why this engine is hard to pull over isn't related to the engine compression, but something mechanically resisting it. Also, the pull rope isn't retracting like it's supposed to, so that's something we'll need to take a look at. Now, this engine uses a clutch-operated blade, and it's the last thing to look at before we consider that the engine has an internal issue that's causing our problems. Next, I'm going to examine the clutch assembly. At the same time, I'll drain the oil out of the engine. As to be expected, the lack of regular oil changes has caused the oil to be extremely dirty. To keep your oil from looking like this, I would suggest changing your oil each mowing season. Now I'm going to be turning the blade by hand and I'm not worried that the engine will start because the kill switch is in the off position and the other reason is there's no gas in the fuel system either. The other reason is that on this style of clutch, when you turn the blade, the engine is not supposed to be rotating, but here's our next problem. As you can see, the bolt in the middle, which goes to the crankshaft, is actually spinning, which is not supposed to happen. That means we have a clutch bearing problem. We need to remove the clutch and inspect both bearings and see if they're working like they're supposed to be. I also see that the bottom blade of this dual blade system is damaged from wear. Now this blade is a high lift blade and with part of the angle section missing, it means that the mower will be less effective at mulching the grass. Luckily, you can still find these online and they're not that expensive. Now if I try to turn the blade holder, it kind of moves, but it only wants to spin when the engine is spinning. That would mean that the bearing in the blade holder is probably stuck. Next, I need to remove the clutch assembly to try and get to the other bearing. So this is the other bearing in the plate assembly and we'll have to remove it so we can inspect it. Now even though there's a spring attached to it, it's actually pretty easy to remove. Now slightly turn the plate clockwise and then slide the plate off the drive pulley and the crankshaft. You can then remove the spring from its anchor and then disconnect the cable from its anchor on the plate. Now with the other bearing being stuck, it just meant that the blade was always going to spin with the engine. But with this bearing being stuck, it meant it was going to fight against the engine. So this is the real reason why the engine speed needed to be adjusted and why the rope is so hard to pull. 
Now, with the bad bearings gone, it's a lot easier to spin the engine over with the pull rope. We're just fighting against the engine compression at this point. But what if we remove the spark plug from the engine and pull the rope again? Now there's hardly any resistance. That means there's probably no internal engine damage to cause any extra drag, which is great news. Now before I remove this bearing, I want to pry off the seal and see what caused this bearing to fail. I'll do the same thing for the other bearing when we get to it. As you can see, it looks as though the grease has dried up and that's what caused it to fail. I'm going to spray some lubricant in there and see if I can get it to free up. Well, it seems pretty stuck, so this bearing is pretty much gone. Now it's time to remove the old bearing from the blade holder. I do have a press I could use, but since most people won't have one available, I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to support the holder off the table, and since the bearing is bad anyway, I'll use a socket that fits the middle part and start hitting. And yes, I'm going to be using a claw hammer for this part. The strangest part is that after hitting it with a hammer, it must have loosened it up because it's working again. It doesn't matter though because we're still going to replace it anyway. Now it's time for the other bearing. Unfortunately, this one was putting up a really good fight, so much so that I had to move it off this wood table and onto some concrete for some more solid hits, and by this time, I used a real hammer. It's also interesting that this bearing is slightly bigger than the first bearing. Now after taking the seal off, we can see that it suffered the same problem. It's now time to install the new bearings. These can be bought online for about $10 a piece. If you want the part numbers, I'll put the links in the description so you can see if they'll work for your mower. I do apologize as I installed the bearings off camera because I needed a firm foundation to hit against. This wood table was absorbing a lot of the force while I was hitting on it. I just used a piece of soft wood as a buffer from the hammer blows. I also installed the bearings till they were flush, just like the original ones that came out of it. Now installing the bearing on the plate assembly was a bit harder because it's not flat on the side I used the piece of wood on. After getting the bearings back in and checking that they work like they're supposed to, it's now time to install everything back on the mower. Now after it's installed, I'll then pull the rope a few times, make sure it's spinning freely until I activate the blade, then the blade holder should be spinning as well. Another reason why it would be extremely tough to pull the rope is that the engine was ran without oil and the aluminum from the connecting rod galled on the steel journal on the crankshaft. This would make it much harder for the connecting rod to spin on the journal and make the rope harder to pull as well. The fix for this is not an easy one because you would need to remove the aluminum from the crankshaft and then more than likely replace the connecting rod. Now that the blades are back on, I'll pull the rope, and as you can see, the crank bolt in the center of the blade holder is spinning, but not the holder. It's also easy to pull the rope still. I'll then activate the blade and pull the rope again, and this time the blades are spinning with the engine just like they're supposed to. That means we fixed the problem and are ready to move on to other issues like the loose front suspension. This is obviously a wear issue, but I'd like to see if we can fix it without having to buy new front end components. The other issue, of course, is the pull rope that won't retract smoothly. Now, this is a maintenance issue, but I'd still like to have a lawnmower with a functioning pull rope. The most important part, though, is replacing that modified governor spring. The only thing that I could hope for is that the engine isn't badly damaged from over revving this engine with extremely low and dirty oil. But we'll have to save that for the next video on this mower. Now, I'm not sure why these bearings lost all their grease and failed, but in my opinion, sealed bearings can't last forever, and at some point, they're going to fail and need to be replaced no matter what brand mower it is. So my question is, after watching this video, would you want a clutch operated blade on your mower? Personally, I would not get this option. I find it just another thing to fail and I don't have a problem with the blade spinning when the engine is running. If the bearings fail in the future, would I fix it again with new bearings? Yes, but only if the bearings are still affordable. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video.